Have you ever had an experience where you couldn't find what you were looking for? In our household, uh, we take times during doing the Christmas or doing the grocery shopping. Excuse me. And uh, don't get me wrong. I kind of like grocery shopping uh, because it gives me an opportunity to escape a house full of priests and be around normal people for a change. But what I don't like about grocery shopping is there's always that one thing on the list that I can never find. And I'm kind of running around the whole store with my cart, pushing it up and down, uh, looking for the low-fat cottage cheese. Where is it? I just can't seem to find it. Sometimes I wonder if there's people, you know, watching us through those little black security cameras with white lab coats on, you know, taking notes and just testing us as subjects. I don't know, I lose my mind. But anyway, I recently discovered online grocery shopping. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but it is life-changing, let me tell you. Like, uh, you order everything online from, you know, your lazy boy, and then you just drive up to the store, you park in a spot, and somebody brings all the groceries out to you. (laughs) All these years, I have been wandering aimlessly through the aisles at Sobeys, using my own legs like a sucker. (laughs) And I didn't realize that everything I was ever looking for was online grocery shopping. It's what I've been looking for. (laughs) Now, what are you looking for? Right, I think we're all looking for something. Like this guy I was talking to recently at soccer, Really nice guy, after the game, we just got chatting. He's not religious, he's not even really spiritual, doesn't practice any faith, doesn't go to church. But we were just had this really fascinating conversation and he was explaining to me how he sometimes wonders about why is it that some people have so little and yet seem happy and other people who have so much seem so unhappy. And I think he was asking for himself, right? Looking for the answer to the question of happiness. Maybe as you're watching this right now, you're looking for something. You're sitting down in front of your computer or looking at your cell phone or watching on, on your TV. What are you looking for today? Maybe you're looking for happiness. Maybe you're looking for financial security. Maybe you're looking for the answer to a question about whether or not you should move or stay or get a new job or or whatever. Maybe you don't even know what you're looking for. And maybe you do know, but it doesn't seem to be where you're looking for it. Like that low-fat cottage cheese just isn't in the place you think it should be. Now, we see this uh, deeply human search, this looking for something more, reflected to us in the gospel that we read today. In the gospel, we see John the Baptist. Now, who is John the Baptist? John the Baptist is, uh, he's a prophet, uh, a teacher, Uh, He had this big, bushy beard. He made his own clothes. He only ate organic. I guess you could say he was kind of the world's first hipster, even before it was cool, right? Andrew uh, and this other guy that the, the, the gospel doesn't name are his followers. And it's really cool. The text says they're standing around with John the Baptist, standing almost as if they're still or perhaps even stuck. If they had a theme song, Andrew and this other disciple, it might be that song from you too. Maybe you know it, you know that refrain, how it goes. But I still haven't found what I'm looking for. And so they're, they're searching for something, they're looking for something, and they haven't quite found it in John the Baptist and his teaching. But suddenly something happens and onto the scene appears Jesus. And and John the, the, the Baptist, he points to Jesus and he says this. He says, look, here is the Lamb of God. 
As if to say, like, perhaps this is the one for whom you are looking. Right? And we say that during Mass when the priest elevates the Eucharist who we believe is Jesus. We see, look, the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. And again, I love the way that the gospel describes it. It says they go from standing around with John the Baptist to suddenly moving. They have a, a new motion in their lives, a, a direction. It says they begin following Jesus. If you ever feel stuck and you don't know what to do, and you feel like you're standing around in life, just follow in the direction of Jesus. Just begin following him, and your life will, will take on a new motion. Now, Jesus, <laughs> he notices them following him, and he turns to them, and he asks them this question. He says, what are you looking for? What are you looking for? Imagine he's not asking that question to Andrew or an unnamed disciple. Imagine it's you. And Jesus is looking. He gazes at you. And with a single glance, he penetrates into the depths of your heart. And he asks you this question. What are you looking for? What are you looking for when you're scrolling endlessly through social media or Facebook, Instagram? What are you looking for uh, when you binge watch Netflix or binge eat? What are you looking for when you stay up late at night and look at things on the internet that you know you shouldn't be looking at? What are you looking for when you gaze into that, that, that empty brown McDonald's hamburger bag. And all you see is that greasy spot left after you devoured all those french fries. That last one's for me. But what are you looking for deep down under all those things? What are you looking for as you sit and watch and listen today? <laughs> what are you looking for? Now Andrew and the other uh, disciple, perhaps they're caught off guard. Uh, their answer to Jesus' question is another question. Because maybe they don't even know exactly what they're looking for, like so many of us. And he says, and they say, Rabbi, where are you staying? We want to come with you. We want to listen to you. We want to be with you. And, and Jesus responds, and I love this, it's so simple. <laughs> it's so simple. All he says is come and see. Three words, come and see. I think sometimes when we're looking for answers, we're looking for uh, a, a simple solution, a, a trite propositional statement that answers the question in my mind. Sometimes we want to be convinced with rational arguments about the things that we should do and why we should do them. And sometimes we want to use rational arguments to convince other people. But that's not what Jesus does. He doesn't engage them in a philosophical, theological argument about why they should follow him, about who he is. He just says, come and see. Come and spend time with me. Come listen to me. Come and be with me. And what did the disciples see? Well, we don't really know. We don't really know uh, what they saw uh, because we, it doesn't tell us in the text. But we do know this. We know it was transformative because of what Andrew did next. So it says they went and they spent the day with him and they spent into the evening with Jesus. And immediately, what does Andrew do? He, it says he first found his brother Simon and said to him, we have found the Messiah. 
he immediately goes to his brother and says, well, like, we have found the one we have been looking for. Messiah is the Hebrew word. Uh, it means the anointed one, the anointed one of God. And for a Hebrew, for uh, a Jew at that time, what it meant was uh, the Messiah was the one that God had sent to, into the world to fulfill all the promises he had made to his people. That the Messiah would be the one who would restore what was taken from them. He would deliver them from what oppressed them. And he would save them from everything that threatened them. In other words, in the Messiah was everything. Andrew and John and Peter and Simon. Everything they were looking for was found in Jesus. And Andrew brought Simon to Jesus. That's what the text says. He brought his brother to Jesus. And as you sit here and, and, and listen and, and pray and, and watch, what are you looking for today? Now we're in a new year, a new opportunity to reconnect, rethink, respond, to reconnect with God, to rethink about what's really important to us and what we really want, what we're really looking for, and to respond to the invitation that God offers us. And one way we respond to God's invitation, one way we come and see who Jesus is and what he's inviting us to is by doing Alpha. And Alpha is something we do here every, uh, every year, a couple times a year. It's very simple. Uh, what is Alpha? It's a time where we gather together, uh, have a little bit of fun. We watch uh, a video that sort of stimulates discussion, which we then have in small groups with other people who are looking for the answers to the sim similar questions that we are, or that you are. Uh, it's uh, starting at the end of the month, uh, Tuesdays and Wednesdays, uh, this January, beginning January 26th, 27th, respectively. If you want more information, you can sign up at stbenedict.ca slash alpha. You can text right now from your cell phone to the number on your screen, 902-900-0509. Text alpha to that number, and we'll send you a link. You can find out more. You can sign up. You can come and see if perhaps the little bit more that you're looking for is found in Jesus. Alpha can help you find that. Now, I want to share with you uh, someone's Alpha story. His name's Cameron. He's a good friend of mine. We've been friends uh, since our childhood. And uh, I'd love for you to listen from him about his experience of Alpha. So let's check. My name's Cameron Rankin, and this is my Alpha story. I began my Alpha journey from an invitation from a really good childhood friend, who some of you may know, Father Alex Kalati, a man whose napping abilities remain unmatched. Now, I'd been invited to Alpha many times over the past few years, and each time I had said no. My parents raised me in the Catholic faith, and I felt like going to a session for beginner Christians was not appealing. It wasn't something that I was looking forward to. And as a person of quiet, private faith, the idea of joining a bunch of total strangers once a week to talk about my faith, I was like, no thanks, next. But my life was in flux. My life was changing at that point in time. I had just graduated from school. I had just moved to a new province. I was looking for work. I was volunteering all during a global pandemic. So I didn't really have an anchor. And at the time when Father Alex asked me, Alpha was going to provide that anchor. And, and more so it was going to provide an opportunity for me to make meaningful social connection. So I took the plunge. I said, yeah, 
Father Alex, I'll do it. I'll do it for you. I wasn't even doing it for, doing it for myself at the beginning. And at the beginning, I missed the first week. The second week, I didn't really talk a lot. But by the third week, I was more comfortable with the people that I was sharing with and even grew to look forward to these alpha meetings, especially the small group discussion. A highlight for me came in week eight when we were having a session of praying over people where we, were, we would all be in front, in front of our computers, close our eyes, and words would be spoken. If we felt like those words meant something to us, we would raise our hands. And again, me being a kind of a shy or private faith, I thought I would just sit there, keep my eyes closed, listen, pray, and wait for it to be over. But God is funny. And of course, at this point in time, this was in the fall, I'd been searching for work for about three months. I was exhausted. I was tired. I was ready to work, but I had no prospects. So as I was there with my eyes closed, I heard the words, should I stay or should I go? Which of course couldn't have been more relevant to me in my life where I was at that point in time. And so I raised my hand. You know, I had to be honest with myself. And, you know, anyway, the, the meeting was over, everything went back. You know, I went back to living my life. And then within two weeks, really within two weeks, the job that I had been pursuing, I got. They offered it to me. And so that was a really powerful moment for me as a result of being an Alpha and it had a direct impact on my immediate life. So here I am. Uh, I've been asked to join the Alpha team. I'm excited to jump in as a helper. And we'll be starting again this January. And so, even if you haven't been invited, the opportunity to make meaningful social connection, learning how to pray, meeting new people, it's all provided in Alpha. And you just really have to show up. God will do the rest. And that's my Alpha story. Thank you, Cameron, for sharing your story. And I love how he put it. Uh, you know, looking for an answer to that question, should I stay or should I go? A very practical life question. He'd been searching for the answer for months and then he found it in Alpha. And then he said, you just, you just have to show up and God does the rest. That's a, a great way of putting it. Just come and see, show up and God does the rest. And if you're looking for something more, you're looking for the answers, perhaps like Cameron was, just come and see. Come and try Alpha. Now, if you're listening today and you're like, yeah, yeah, I've been there, I've done that, uh, I, I've done Alpha, uh, I've, I've found what I'm looking for in Jesus. Well, your invitation today is to be like Andrew, who once he found what he was looking for, he didn't keep it to himself, but he immediately went to find the person that he loved, his brother, Simon, and he brought him to Jesus. And Simon went on to become Peter the Apostle, who went out and transformed the world because he found everything that he was looking for in Jesus. Now, at St. Benedict, you could say that's what we're all about about bringing people to Jesus. Because we believe that in Jesus is found everything that the human heart is searching for. And like Andrew, you can be a part of the life-transforming reality of discovering that in Jesus and in the lives of the people that you love. So go, <laughs> come and see, or invite somebody else that you love to come and see if what they're looking for can be found in Jesus.